Hi, I'm Sean Gannett, and this is Minute Math, and today we're going to learn about evaluating limits. We're going to evaluate each limit here. So, if I was given this limit as x approaches 3, of the negative square root of x plus 3, okay? Well, we can only really, um, since this is a root function, one of our rules says root functions, wherever exists in the domain, we can plug in directly that limit. So, since 3 is going to exist in our domain, because, well, 3, then for x3 plus 3 is 6, we can take the square root of 6, right? There's no, we're not taking the square root of any negative here. We can directly plug in 3 for x. So let's do that. We have negative out front, square root, 3 plus 3. Well, like I just said, 3 plus 3 is 6. We have a negative square root of 6. And at this point, um, I think it's simplest as it is. Now, some people, you know, you might first see you do prime factorization, but this one really can't break down anymore because 6 is 2 times 3, and there's nothing you can really pull out. So our final answer here to this limit is fairly simple, actually. Kind of complicated with the root is negative square root of 6. So let's recap. We're given a limit as x approaches 3 and of negative square root of x plus 3. Well, we have a root function here, and we can only take a limit where that function exists. Exists. Okay, it's continuous everywhere where it exists. So we can plug 3 directly in for x. 3 plus 3 was 6. We have to take a square root of 6 and a negative on the outside. But there's nothing else that we can simplify. Uh, we can always make it a decimal, but this is more neat, actually. So our final answer here uh, for this limit just comes out to be a negative square root of 6.